Hello and welcome to my channel if this is the first video of mine that you are watching and if it is not, welcome back. Today, as you can obviously tell by the title and the thumbnail, I have a massive book haul to share. And full disclosure, I purchased most of these books back in November uh, and haven't read them yet. So this is also just me publicly shaming myself into finally reading these books. But then since November, I've also picked up a fair, a few others. So I'm going to share those at the very end. So without further ado, let's dive into this book haul. First, for no other reason than it is at the top of the stack and I don't want the books next to me to fall down is Vita Nostra. Now this one is described as a brilliant dark fantasy that combines psychological suspense, enchantment, and terror. Um, from the blurb on the back here, it follows a young teenage girl, Sasha, who while she is on vacation meets this mysterious man that gives her these gold coins in exchange for tasks that she does. And then at the end of the summer, he offers her a spot at this prestigious, elite, mysterious boarding school, um, which isn't quite what it seems. And it seems to involve magic somehow. So I, d like, I don't know very much about this, but I have heard good things and I've seen it doing the rounds. So when I saw this on sale, I really wanted to pick it up and I'm looking forward to reading this whenever I get to it. Next, I have a YA fantasy romance, which if you have watched many of my videos, you know is a particular subgenre that I adore, and this is The Lantern's Ember. And it has a bit to do with the underworld from my understanding. Here on the front flap, it says that Ember O'Dare has a secret. She is a natural born witch. From an early age, she's had a knack for crafting potions and felt an indescribable pull to the ancient bridge in her town of Hallowell. Little does Ember know, the bridge is a gateway to the other world, a realm crawling with fiendish beasts. And Jack, an ever vigilant watchman, is committed to keeping meddlesome mortals away. His task is simple, or it would be, if he weren't falling for the very witch he's trying to keep out. Undeterred by Jack's warnings, Ember crosses into the forbidden plain and sets off a chase through a world beyond her wildest imaginings. Now Jack must do everything in his power to rescue his true love before the earthly and unearthly worlds descend into chaos. So this just seems like really good fun. It is a standalone from my understanding and I haven't heard too much about it, but I'm really looking forward to a little bit of enemies to lovers and uh, just hopefully this will be a fun fantasy romance for me. Next, I have a, another YA fantasy, and that is The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. To be honest, I didn't even read the blurb for this book before I purchased it. I got it online, and I had just seen it making the rounds on Bookstagram, and a few people who I really... Um, trust their opinions, have reviewed it and given it good reviews. So I just snapped it up really quick. The blurb on the front here says, authorized to kill and sell books, which just sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, it is apparently set in an alternate London in 1983, and Merlin is part of the cast of characters and it's described as a pulse-pounding and laugh-out-loud expedition into the world of magical booksellers, a unique fantasy that blurs the boundaries between reality and mythic legend, which just sounds like really good fun. So if you have read this one, let me know what you thought down below. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. Now, moving away from young adult fantasy to adult fantasy for a brief moment here, I have A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay. Now, I adore Guy Gabriel Kay's writing, and again, this was a book that I had had on my TBR, my wish list, 
didn't really read the synopsis just because I trust Kay that much. So when I saw it on sale, I just picked it up super fast. The blurb on the back here says that as the son of a tailor, Daniel Osera rose far beyond his station when he took service at the court of a ruling count and soon learned why the man was known as the Beast. But his fate changed the moment he recognized Adria Rapoli as she entered the Count's chambers one autumn night, intending to kill. Born to power, Adria had chosen, instead of a life of comfort, one of danger and freedom, which is how she encountered Danio in such a perilous time and place. As their journeys intertwine, A Brightness Long Ago offers both compelling drama and deeply moving reflections on the nature of memory, the choices we make in life, and the role played by the turning of fortune's wheel which sounds amazing. And if it is anything like A Song for Arbonne or Tigana by Guy Gabriel K, I know this will be a four or a five star read for me. I really love how deep he gets into his writing and the themes that are super prevalent throughout his work. So really looking forward to reading this when the time comes. Following that book up with another Guy Gabriel K novel, I have here Children of Earth and Sky, which again, I did not read the synopsis before I purchased it because I just saw his name, I saw a good deal, and I thought that it was mine. My camera cut out there, so I don't actually know the last thing that I said about Children and Earth of Sky, but I feel as if I was just repeating myself and saying how excited I am to read another K novel because I love his writing and his command of prose and just the worlds that he creates, which are so reminiscent of times and place within history that are then injected with this really fun, fantastical element. So obviously I picked this up, so I'm excited to read it, but looking forward to another K novel. Next, sticking within the fantasy genre, I picked up The Wolf's Call by Anthony Ryan. So the blurb here says that Valen is a living legend, his name known across the realm. It was his leadership that overthrew empires, his blade that won hard-fought battles, and his sacrifice that defeated an evil more terrifying than anything the world had ever seen. He won titles aplenty, only to cast aside his earned glory for a quiet life in the realm's northern reaches. Yet whispers have come from across the sea, rumors of an army called the Steel Horde, led by a man who believes himself a god. Valen has no wish to fight another war, but when he learns that Sharon, the woman he lost long ago, has fallen into the Horde's grasp, he resolves to confront this powerful new threat. To this end, Valen travels to the realms of the Merchant Kings, a land ruled by honor and intrigue. There, as the drums of war thunder across kingdoms riven by conflict, Valen learns a terrible truth. There are some battles that even he may not be strong enough to win. So this just sounds like a fun, uh, classic, adventure-packed fantasy. So I can't wait to pick this one up and see what I think about it. The next book that I picked up, I'd actually never heard of before I stumbled across it. But once I started looking into it, it seemed really riveting and I couldn't leave it behind. And that is Crossings by Alex Landragon. And I mean, take a moment for this cover. It is just stunning and beautiful with the depiction of Paris across the bottom. And this is Landragon's debut novel. And it starts with a Parisian bookbinder who's putting together this manuscript. And then events occur which influence him to read said manuscript. And he finds three very different stories within it. So there's a little bit of mystery. There's a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of historical fiction in this book, and I'm really intrigued. As well, it was apparently written so that you could either read it chronologically from the first page to the last page, or by following an alternative chapter sequence, which sounds very intriguing to me. I don't think that is the way that I'd want to read this novel for the first time. I think I will read it just chronologically one through 
300 but if I enjoy this book and want to gain a new perspective in a reread the alternative chapter sequence sounds really interesting so let me know if you've heard of this book or if you've read it I really want to prioritize reading this sooner rather than later just because I'm so intrigued by the concept and I really want to see what the execution is like now finally, the last book that I bought back in November is actually an anthology, and that is The Book of Dragons, which is edited by Jonathan Strahan. Now, if you know me, I love dragons, so this was just a no-brainer, and the cover is beautiful, and I'm just so excited to read a anthology, a collection that is all about dragons. Um, some authors that are in this collection off the back here, Jane Yolen, Daniel Abraham, Ken Liu, Joe Walton, I adore Joe Walton, R.F. Quang, um, Garth Nix, Seanan McGuire, Anne Leckie, Patricia A. McKillop, Scott Lynch. I really adore Scott Lynch and the lies of Locke Lamora. So, and then so many more other authors that I've not read before. So I'm really looking forward to reading this book and seeing the depiction of dragons by all of these excellent, excellent authors. And hopefully I will be able to find a few new authors that I've never heard of or never read before that may become favorites. So very excited for this anthology collection here. And now we are on to the books that I have picked up since November, which aren't too many. I did try to exercise a little bit of restraint and willpower since I had so many unread books on my shelves, but there were a few deals that I just couldn't pass up. So first, we have another Guy Gabriel K novel, which is The Lions of Al Rasan. Now I picked this up because I saw it at a charity shop and one, I love the kind of penguin mass market paperback uh, format of books and you don't see them very often. So I was, it drew my eye due to that. And then also just it's a K novel, so I had to pick it up. So I have so much Guy Gabriel K in front of me, and I know he has a new book coming out soon, I think at the end of this month, something like that. So I really need to work through some of these books that I have by him. This book is hauntingly evocative of medieval Spain, and it is an exhilarating story of love, divided loyalties, and what happens to men and women when passionate beliefs conspire to remake or destroy a world. And I am just so excited. This one is quite chunky and the font is fairly small, but I am so excited to read this book here. And then I believe in that same shopping trip, I found Belgareth the Sorcerer by David and Lee Eddings. Now I have read the Belgariad, Belgariad, which is a five book series that is kind of middle grade slash young adult. It's an old classic fantasy story. And this is one of the prequels that gives a little bit of backstory to one of the characters who acts as um, kind of the, the guide figure within the Belgariad. So this is all about Belgareth and kind of how he came to be and how he became a part of this prophecy that has to do with the Belgariad. So I saw this and I mean I love the retro cover um, and just had to pick that up. I'm not sure when I'll get to it because I've already finished the series and this is a prequel. I'll have to kind of slip back into that world, but this is definitely one that I've had on my radar. And when I saw it for a really good deal, I couldn't resist. Next is a book that I had had on my radar for 
at least six months or so, but it was sold out online and in store and I just couldn't get my hands on it. So when I saw it come back in stock online, I couldn't resist and I had to pick it up. And that is the first omnibus of the Gotrek and Felix stories. So this is a collection of the first six novels following these characters. And because of that, it is quite chunky and the font is quite small. So this is another one where I'm not sure when I will get to it, but I was so hyped and so excited about this book last summer that I'm really gonna try and at least chip away at one book or one story at a time. Now on the back here, it says, Gotrick and Felix, unsung heroes of the empire or nothing more than common thieves and murderers. The truth perhaps lies somewhere in between and depends entirely on who you ask. Relive the early adventures of the Slayer and his human companion, from the haunted forests of the Empire to the darkness beneath the world's edge mountains. Gotrick and Felix face demented cultists, sinister goblins, and a monstrous troll. In the city of Nalm, they get involved in an invasion by this sewer-dwelling Skaven, and in the frozen north, an expedition to the lost dwarf hold of Carrig Dum brings Gotrick and Felix face to face with a bl dread bloodthirster of chaos. So I am really excited to give this a go. Now we are on to the final books that I just picked up last week. The first of which is The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. Now this is the third book in the Gentleman Bastards series. And I read and adored The Lies of Loch Lamora and Red Seas Under Red Skies. This is an unfinished series and I believe the fourth, the publication of the fourth book has now been pushed out to 2024. So I don't think I will be reading this immediately. I think I'm going to save it until a bit closer to that release date. Um, however, this is another book that I saw going in and out of stock online. It was completely out of stock online from the bookseller that I purchased from. And weirdly enough, my local bookstore, which doesn't always have a great fantasy selection, had one copy of this book in stock. Didn't have the first or the second, just the third book. And I took it as a sign that it was meant for me and I needed to pick it up just in case it goes out of print and then it suddenly becomes a little bit more difficult to get my hands on or I have to wait for a reprint. So I'm not sure if I'm going to read this immediately because the second book ended on a massive cliffhanger. However, if this book ends on a massive cliffhanger, then I won't have any other books to tide me over until the fourth book is published. So I think I'd rather kind of just keep it on my shelf and know that I can at least take another step forward. Um, oh, I guess there's like a spoiler on this cover. But yes, The Republic of Thieves. This one I know I won't be reading right away, but it is a book that I know I needed to have be part of my collection. So very happy that I got my hands on a copy of this locally and that it can now adorn my bookshelves as I anxiously await the confirmation and then the publication of the fourth book in this series. And the final book in this massive book haul is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey, which is a beloved science fiction novel and the first book in a really lengthy science fiction series, which also seems to get a lot of hype online as well. It's been adapted into a television show, which I've heard quite a few good things about. This has actually been on my radar and on my Goodreads TBR for, I wanna say something like three years, but because it's part of a long series, I was always a little bit put off from starting it. However, I decided to finally bite the bullet and pick it up and hopefully I enjoy it as much as I am anticipating that I will. Science fiction isn't a genre that I read a whole lot of. However, it is a genre that I'm really eager to explore and read more from. So this is kind of your stereotypical science fiction book 
with space exploration in this world humanity has colonized parts of the solar system however outside of our solar system uh, and beyond the asteroid belt I believe uh, things are a little bit murky and the rules are different and one small ship can change the fate of the universe so I'm really intrigued by this so hopefully it lives up to all of the hype that I've heard about it and that I've built up in my own mind over the last three years or so and that is the end of my massive book haul. It goes without saying that I am now on a bit of a book buying ban. I don't want to say a complete hard and fast book buying ban because I did that last year and I found it to be a little bit restrictive and discouraging um, because you never know when you're going to find an amazing deal or when a new book is going to be released that you're super excited about. So I don't want to restrict myself however I don't want to be just buying books for the thrill of it because I have so many here that I'm so excited to read and I really want to prioritize reading these books. There are quite a few chunky ones here, so I think it's gonna take me a little while to read through them. However, I definitely wanna prioritize the unread books on my shelf before I go out and buy new books. So this might be the last book haul you see on this channel for a few months at least, but I hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these books or if they're on your TBR because I'd love to chat about them. As ever, thank you very much for watching this video and I will be back soon with a new one. Bye for now.